Good morning, all. Uh, thank you very much for your very diplomatic answers. Uh, in terms of Panama, try to keep up on that. Thank you, Mr. Olumide and uh, Dean Foster for hosting us here. It's definitely a privilege to be here. I'm here to talk about Panama in several ways. I'm, I'll first try to provide a general, a general introduction for a very small country, some of the macro fundamentals that are currently undergoing, some of the opportunities and the different sectors in which these opportunities could take place, and some of the incentives that um, that could be applied to, to, to US companies trying to do business in Panama. Okay. As you can see, we're Panama, uh, Panama City is our capital. We have around 75,000 square kilometers, which translates to around 29,000 square miles. Uh, in this small area, in comparison to other countries, 6% uh, of worldwide trade actually crosses the, the Panama Canal with an average of 14,000 vessels a year. We are a free market economy that serves as a, that, that we like to think serves as a, as a worldwide axis for trade. 80% uh, is, 80% of our economy is services oriented. Um, we have a, a little less than 4 million, a little less than 4 million um, uh, our population is a little bit less than 4 million. We have 10 provinces, five indigenous region, constitutional democracy, and we've been dollarized since 1904, which brings many advantages in terms of doing business, especially for U.S. companies. Uh, Spanish is the official language, but in terms of doing business, English is widely available. I think it's important to, to, to try to, to understand how, how far Panama has come over the last 15, over the last 15 years. GDP per capita has doubled since since, since 1999 towards, towards 2013. In 1997, Panama joined the, the, w, the WTO, and this led by, by massive privatization of, uh, of, 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 uh, of the Panama Canal Railway, of ports, of, um, of, of the electric company, uh, telecommunications, led to, an, led to a huge increase in, in, in foreign direct investment and and in the standard of living in, in, uh, in, in general. And since Germany in the WTO in 1997, exports have grown 280% and imports have grown 250% in, in the past 15 years. Uh, in 1999, we have fewer than 10 multinational headquarters company. This was accompanied by, by a very friendly legal framework for, in, for, in, for investors, including attractive tax investments that have led Panama to today, in 2013, have more than 100 uh, a multinational headquarters company, um, uh, in which more than 26 are U.S. companies, and I'll expand this later on. Um, Panama Canal revenues in 1999 were 500 million. Today, they stand at 1.85 billion. It mainly led that after 2000, the, the, uh, the structure of the Panama Canal was restructured in a way in a for-profit model, trying to be as efficient as possible and cut costs as much as possible. In terms of tourism, we have 500, 550,000 tourism in 1999. Now we have 2 million. And 2 million in comparison with a population of 4, of 4 million, it's quite a significant number. In terms of the macro, I, I think it's very important to address the, macro, the, the macroeconomic environment. Since, since 2011, a massive, infra, massive government investment in infrastructure have led to a spike in, in, in public debt. And even though, even, though, even though net debt has increased in terms of infrastructure, our net to GDP ratio, our net debt to GDP ratio has remained, has even decreased and at the same time remained constant. Um, that investment, that, that, uh, that, that, that spike in net debt was, made, was mainly driven by the Panama Canal expansion, which, uh, which is an around $6 billion project investment and the first metro, me operational metro in Central America, the Line 1. Uh, line two is currently being in procurement, and studies are being are being uh, are on their way for the for the third line of the metro. Okay. And in addition, 78% of our debt is placed in international capital markets, which significant which which implies very favorable very very favorable uh, uh, macroeconomic environments and lower costs of financing in general. We, we for for we have for uh, for 2014 we're estimating one of the highest growth rates in the region. Uh, at 6.7%, six, at 6 we're, we're still waiting for the official figures to come out. Uh, 
and which is you know, a very favorable macro environment. Yeah, let's skip a slide over here. Let me see. Okay. In indicating our commitment to to attracting foreign direct investment, we want to make we want to make the government has a goal of making Panama a very a very very friendly country for doing business. I think this is indicated uh, by a variation in the doing business ranking positions uh, 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 published by the IFC since. 2009 and 2014, we have we have we've had a 26 variation in positions for positively, obviously, uh, 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 for doing business. And in um, and between and between uh, 2013 and 2014, only in one year, we improved six positions. I think this I think this is a very important testament to what we're trying to do and make bis and make investment and doing business in Panama as easy as possible. GDP growth rate uh, in the first half of 2014 has stabilized, uh, has stabilized somewhat in comparison to previous years. In previous years, investment was mainly driven by, by, um, by, uh, by fiscal policy and investments in infrastructure, which were desperately needed and, uh, and, do and, are, and are extremely important in terms of, of pushing the country forward and try to establish the correct amount of, of, of resources needed for the country to move forward. Uh, unemployment rate, it's at its lowest as it's ever been at 4.3%. At and then in, and in, and, um, and, um, and public expenditure over the, over the last five years have, have totaled 13.6 billion. FDI um, in 2013 was $4.6 billion, which in terms of a country in the size of Panama is quite significant numbers. Um, which is which is which means 20 26 percent more in comparison over the over 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 the previous year in 2012. Panama's GDP structure is well somewhat diversified. We're mainly driven by um, by transfer, storage, communications, which, which mainly could be the logistics sector, followed by followed by wholesale and retail and financial intimidation. Construction does play a very important role, especially over the past few years where there's been a real estate boom. And this has mainly been driven in, 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 a, in a lot of ways in in way by, the, by the migration towards Panama uh, of, of people retiring and, and the demand for highly skilled, and, and highly skilled labor. Um, So logistics is, I believe, one of the most important, one of the most important clusters in the in the in the in the in the Panamanian economy, and this sector represents about 25 percent of GDP. Ports move around, ports move more than six million TEUs per year. Uh, we have ports in both in the Atlantic and the Pacific side, two in the Pacific and three in the Atlantic. Uh, in well, the, the Pacific in Panama City, the, the, the Atlantic in in. Um, in Cologne, the, the railway that which connects both ports across the isthmus is the only it's the only place in the world in which you're able to move a container from ocean to ocean in less than two hours, which 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 for shippers uh, uh, it has the ability of drop containers in one side, put it on a railway, and send it in less than two hours to a different port instead of having to cross the canal or 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 any other uh, operational operational requirements. Tokuma Airport in 2013. Uh, transited 7.7 .7 million passengers, and this figure is expected to double once the operation on the south <coughs> terminal begins. Tokuman Airport, over the last few years, underwent an expansion, which began with a north terminal expansion, which added, which added around 20 new gates. Now we're in the construction of the south terminal, and we're expecting these numbers to go on, to, to, uh, to increase over the next coming years once the south, term once the south terminal is, uh, is completed. Uh, I'm not, if, if you're going to talk about the logistics sector in Panama, we have to talk about the free zone law, uh, the, the, the free zone law, Panama Pacific, the, especially the Cologne free zone, which is the second largest free zone in the world after Hong Kong, and the, Mucina, and the multinational headquarters laws, which are the access and the, and, and the framework for, for, for what Panama is nowadays. And I'll spend on the, on the, on the, on the multinational headquarters law um, um, later on, on, the, on the presentation. I'm sure you're very interested in, in hearing about the, uh, 
about the ex about the expansion of the canal, which we which we expect to be ready operational in early early 2016. The max size of vessels that can that can actually cross the canal stands around 4,600 TEUs. With the newly expanded canal, it will reach to 12,600 TEUs, and this has an, an enormous amount of benefits for uh, for for the U.S. Um, Given that, you, given that on the same ship you'll be able to carry more cargo and have a lower cost per container, a, a lower cost per TU for shippers. Um, the expansion of the canal is divided in several parts. First, you have a, a new set of locks in the Pacific and a new set of locks on the Atlantic side, um, as you can see in, in, this, in this slide. And at the same time, the, uh, the Gatun Lake, which stands in the middle of the country, um, which uh, until a few years ago was the, was the biggest man-made lake in the world. It's having a few, it's, it's increasing its, its, um, its draft by a few inches. And the Culebra Code, which cuts through the mountains, is also being expanded and dredged downwards in order to accommodate, to accommodate, uh, to, uh, to accommodate the new ships. If you have any more questions about the canal, uh, I will be more than happy to answer them afterwards. I could talk about this for hours, but, but, <laughs> but, but for the sake of the presentation, I think it's better to move on. Um, six percent of global traffic passes passes through Panama. Only in the Americas, there's direct access from Panama to around 958 million 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 consumers. Um, Panama can serve as this. I mean, we've we've been we've been working very hard towards making this happen. Um, and you know, once the expanded canal comes into place, we expect these numbers to double. Um, and so we're looking really looking forward for that. In terms of which type of cargo crosses the Panama Canal, main type of cargo is grains, around 10%. Containerized, car containerized cargo is 4.7, coal 1.2%, chemical 5.8%, and minerals and mineral 1.8%, which adds up around 6% of global, of global world, worldwide trade that actually crosses through the Panama Canal. Air connectivity has definitely Definitely play, if not that one of the most important roles, if not the most important roles into transforming Panama into a into a into a regional hub for establishing operations, doing business, and doing commerce. We have over six. Uh, well, right now, after the new announcement, we have over 71 direct destinations from Panama City to uh, uh, across the Americas in 30 countries. This is a transit of, of I've mentioned before, 7.7 .7 million passengers. Um, in addition, to, in addition to this operation, we, which actually occurs at the Cumberland International Airport, we, are, we, we, we have, um, we're building new airports towards, towards the interior of the country to, have, um, to, to be able to handle uh, tourists in traffic and try to decentralize the operations. All right. Telecommunications connectivity, Panama is ranked 43rd worldwide and second in Latin America by the Network Readiness Index of the World Economic, Tony of the, on the world, in the, of the world Economic Forum. Um, many companies have decided to establish in Panama to establish their, lo their local call centers uh, and, 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 com and communications. I think there are very, very much opportunities and there are incentive laws in order, and, there are, and the government has put incentive laws into place in order to attract this type of investment. Construction is, as seen the graph, really one, a very important uh, part of our economy. In 2013, construction generated more than 4.1 billion, which accounted to 12% of GDP, and 30% higher than in 2012. Many companies, many U.S. companies and, con and companies around the world use a joint venture model in which they partner, in which they partner with a local company in order to establish, con in, in order to begin construction. There are very, 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 very few limitations in order to do, to do this. And the uh, constructions on the, on, on the new metro will definitely allow for the city to expand east and west side instead of centralizing, giving whole new opportunities for developments in the outskirts of the city, which excellent connectivity with, uh, with, with, um, with, with, with metro, with a new metro that we're expecting to be built. The financial sector in Panama, it's, it's um, quite, a, quite, a, quite a robust system. 76% uh, is comprised by national and foreign banks. 52% of the of total assets belong to international private banks, 35% to, to Panamanian private banks, and 30% to official banks, which means are uh, banks owned by the government. Um, 
make sure on time. Some very important point is that we do not have a central bank. We're a dollarized economy since 1904. This has huge, huge advantages in terms that there is no country, there is no currency risk and free movement of capital in and out of the country. Um, insurance sector also plays insurance sector also plays a very important role. Uh, premium, 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 premiums reach 1.3 billion, 30%, 35% more than 2012, more than 2012. And, uh, total, uh, and total assets on the, the banking system stand around $100 billion. Given that 80% 80, given that 80, 80 of our economy is, is completely service-based, this allows certain advantages given the fact that we are not as prone in terms of, 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 export, good, of export of goods towards, towards um, Towards, towards fluctuations in, the, in, the, in, 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 in global conditions. And this graph and the, and the graph above uh, uh, next week will prove testament to that, that even though many crises in the world, the Panamanian financial sector, financial sector keeps growing strong and we expect it to do so over the next coming years. Um, the trade promotion agreement sign, signed uh, and put into effect on, on October 31st, 2012 uh, has a, a wide range amount of benefits for U.S. investors looking to do business in Panama. Uh, I would like to focus more not on the not on the elimination of trade barriers or that, but on the protections that it, that it would allow and it would grant towards towards the movement of capital and investment in Panama. And this are in, it, 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 it opens up the telecommunication market. It provides investors. It provides a greater a, a greater protection of copyright, a labor and invent, a labor and, inver, and environmental rights and equal conditions for foreign investment. So it will provide, in a way, a standardized playing field for people, for US companies and, in, and personal and people trying to do, invest and do business in Panama. Um, like that, the US is, is and, and, and has always have been, and always has been a, a main trading partner. 18% um, of our exports go to the United States, followed by Canada and then China. We have SDAs with 13, country, with 13 countries, in, including the United States, Canada, Mexico, Colombia, Chile, and we have um, special agreements within the EU and the, and the FTA. Imports, the US again, 24% our main export partner, and, uh, and um, well, yeah, uh, services. 80% of the economy is related to service. Uh, service exports represent 92% of our, of, our, of our total exports, which ex ex excluding the free zone given that, we're, we're, uh, that we are a services-based economy. Ener uh, energy. I, most of the opportunities currently that I think exist are in the energy sector. Currently, currently, uh, currently we are expecting a growth rate of 7.5% 7, 7 per year until 2016. 60% of our energy is derived from, ha from hydropower and the rest from thermal. So I see. So we see opportunities in terms of, the, of diversifying the energy matrix towards other renewables, solar energy, and wind, and and uh, and there are incentives law in, into place towards attracting this type of investment, investment that I will be more than happy to discuss afterwards with any information based on that. Uh, to see demand continue to go up. This is this the multinational the multinational headquarters law is one of is one of the reasons why many U.S. companies or companies around the world have, have decided to establish in Panama, as it does provide certain, a great amount, a great amount of, uh, of incentives towards establishing your operations in Panama. There are currently 106 companies, uh, 28 come from the U.S., um, and, the, and, the, and the entire procedures for establishing are made quite easy in a, in, in a one-stop shop by the Ministry of Commerce, and I'll, again, I'll be happy to expand on that. Some of the benefit, some of some of the benefit as exemption on, of, on, on income tax based in offshore operations, such ex, exception from tax for services rendered abroad. Uh, uh, the in, on, in in terms of labor, Panamanian labor code restriction to hire expats does not apply under this law. Um, and migration services, uh, permanent and temporary visa avail availability with servant with with several benefits. Uh, uh, towards spouses and workers of companies established under the multinational headquarters regime. Some of the allowed activities based in the, in the multinational headquarters law, financial management, treasury service, operations, uh, research and development, business group accounting. Again, I 
will be more than happy than to expand on this later on as some short on time. The, the free zone regime in which the uh, in which the Cologne free zone stands is also a very a very good opportunity to establish to establish to establish businesses as products, as products can come into Panama towards the free zone without without having to pay any import tax, neither export tax. So it's saying legally like the product never enters the country. So it, so it will provide a sense of 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 uh, of, of distribution a, 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 a hub in the city and. Um, Thank you. Thank you so much.